Hello all and welcome to my very first Unity Quickie. In this tutorial we will have a look at the creation of sliding joints. During preparation of my upcoming VAM tutorial number 19, I stumbled over an issue which really drove me nuts. I was not able to create a working sliding joint out of Unity's configurable joint component and whatever I did, the results were unlogical and not satisfying. The worst thing for me, I did not know why. So I created a test scene and after an hour or so of trial and error, I figured out what I did wrong and finally I was able to create the sliding joints without experimenting but with knowledge. As I did not find a detailed enough tutorial on exactly this topic, I thought it would be a good idea to create this one and share my findings with you guys. Ok, let's get started. This is my test scene with some sliding doors. The grouping is done so that all components are child objects of an empty game object which acts as a master anchor on position 0. Inside this group we have the fixed mainframe and another MT named slide door Z which groups the actual door frame, the glass and a handle. All of those contain box colliders. The asset is made for use in a VR game, so the sliding door shall be manually operated by the user's virtual hands, means all movements depend on the physics engine. In order to use the physics engine on the door model, we have to add a rigid body component to the parent empty of the door components. The included items do not need additional rigid bodies. We can leave gravity on and is kinematic off. When we now start the play mode and touch the door with the cylinder, we see it falling down as expected due to the rigid body component with enabled gravity. Ok, in order to guide the door properly, we will add a join to the parent empty over Add Component Physics Configurable Joint. This is by far the most complex joint component as you will see later. Let's first have a look at the hand tool which is now in move mode. The colors of the arrows indicate the axis names. You can see the axis letters as well on the scene gizmo which always shows the world axis orientation. Blue is the Z axis, red is the X axis and green is the Y axis. If you want to move the slide door now to the left side, we do this in the blue axis which seems to be Z. So in the joint settings we select Z as the moving axis by adding one here and set all others to zero. The secondary axis can stay as is with the vertical Y axis selected. We want to lock all the rotations of the door. Then we set Z motion to limited and X and Y motion to locked. Finally set the linear limit to 0.4 meters, which is about half the width of the sliding door. The limit you set here starts at the center of the allowed track and allows to move the given value in plus minus direction, so 0.8 meters in total. Let's have a quick check. Touch the door with the cylinder and it moves in the correct direction and stops after 0.4 meter. Ok, that worked somehow, but did you recognize that we already made our first mistake? We can see that something is wrong when we now try to move the anchor in the sliding direction which has been set to the Z axis. Oops, the anchor does not move in the sliding direction which is indicated by the blue arrow. In order to move the anchor in the correct direction, I would have to change the X position. Also, when we have a closer look at the anchor gizmo, we see that the yellow arrow is not pointing to the sliding direction. The reason for this mismatch is that we have to specify the axis orientation with the local coordinate system, but Unity was set to the world coordinate system. So let's fix this now. Aha, now we see that the sliding axis is not in Z anymore, but X, as indicated by the red arrow. To get the correct orientation, we now have to update the axis settings accordingly. Our real local sliding axis is the X axis, 
so we set the one there and set the other directions to zero. In addition, we can now set the motion axis as well to X, just as you would expect this. Another test. Movement direction is ok, so not a big difference to earlier. But when we now move the anchor point in the X axis, also the gizmo moves correctly in the X axis. And we can see as well that the yellow arrow is now perfectly aligned with the sliding axis. This harmonization is important for later steps. Ok, first lesson learned today. Make sure to have the hand tool set to local coordinate system when you set up joint axis. The next important advice is that the parent empty should always be in exactly the same orientation as the main child objects. This is the case here. However, to give you a proof, I prepared a second slide door with the parent empty in wrong orientation and named that accordingly. You see that the parent empty has the blue Z axis in slide direction and X axis points to the back side of the door. But the door frame handle as well as the glass handle have the red X axis in slide direction and the blue Z axis points to the back side. I perform now exactly the same steps like before with the other door. Adding rigid body with same setting. Adding configurable joint. We are in local coordinate system, so we know the parent empty shows the local Z axis in blue. Now let's set up the joint accordingly. Z on one as sliding axis, the others to zero. Now Z motion on limited, all other axes to locked, exactly like before. Movement axis is now set to the same axis indicated by the hand tool in local coordinate system. And again we set a linear limit to 0.4. Now a test in play mode. And with correct setup of the joint parameters the door moves in the wrong direction. Only because the parent empty has an incorrect orientation. I mean, where is this described? One would expect that the parent empty is the only relevant object for the joint which is attached to it. I have no idea why the child object have influences here, but it is like it is. However, this is fixable by changing the axis from Z to X. But by doing this, we create the known inconsistencies. Like anchor is moving in different direction as it is supposed to. The axes are not facing to the right direction. And the active motion axis is not the same as the selected main axis. Ok, back to the good model. Let's finalize the setup here. For demonstration purpose, I will disable the colliders in the handle, so that it does not stop the door movement when it hits the mainframe. As you know, we have limited the sliding motion to 0.4 meters, so the door stops on the left side of the track as previously, but it runs far over the frame on the right side. The reason is that the connected anchor is not at the right position for the intended movement. Actually, it is set to the same position as the parent empty, but in world coordinates. From this point, the set limit allows 400mm movement to the right and 400mm to the left side. In order to correct this position, we have to disable auto-configure connected anchor. And then we are able to move the connected anchor along the sliding axis. Oh, uh, one point to mention here. As the joint is not attached to another rigid body, the anchor point uses world coordinate system. So in this case, we have to modify the Z value, not the X value, as we can see on the world gizmo. So I catch the anchor again with the auto mode.
and use now the Z slider. The correct position of the anchor is roughly in the middle between start and end point of the parent MT's supposed movement. Test again. Ok good, the door moves to the end point and the door handle does not hit the frame. In opposite direction, the door closes correctly. In case this does not happen, we can always fine-tune the anchor position or give a bigger limit value. Now, there comes yet another point to consider. I mentioned earlier that the joint connected anchor is not attached to another object, but fixed to world coordinates. This is ok if you want to use the asset only on one single position and with a fixed orientation. But if you want to relocate the sliding door asset, you will run into issues. Let me show this by rotating the complete asset a bit. You will already notice that the anchor point sticks at the same place. But when entering play mode, you can see the real mess. Ok, undo the rotation with Ctrl Z and catching the anchor point with auto mode. To attach the joint to the main frame, we first must add a rigid body to the frame, as joints can only be connected to other rigid bodies. Set gravity to off and is kinematic to on, as the frame should not be affected by physics. In the joint settings we can now select the new rigid body from the scene section. Same procedure again, disable auto configure, but now we can move the connected anchor by use of the X slider, as it is now bound to the local coordinate system of the mainframe and this has the same orientation as the sliding door. The yellow arrow of the connected anchor is now also aligned with the sliding axis. Another quick test in play mode if the setup works. Yup, looks good on the left side, but the door does not close completely, so I will shift the anchor a bit to the right. Another test and OK. And now you will see the big advantage of the joint connection to the mainframe. Selecting the asset's parent empty, rotate and we can already see that the anchor follows the door movement. Test in play mode and it works like it should. Under rotation again. There is one final thing which I want to show. If you want to have that door closing automatically, you can do this easily as well with the same configurable joint. It offers so many possibilities, one of which is the drive functionality. In this case we need X drive. Target position from center is minus 0.4, but in order to have the door always completely closing, I set this to minus 0.45. For the position spring let's try 40, damper say 200 and the maximum force should be quite low as we have to overcome this force with the virtual hands in the VR application. So I will choose 10. And we see that the door nicely closes automatically. To further adjust the speeds we can play with the target velocity value. Try a low value of 0.02. But now we have to reduce the spring value as velocity seems to add as well some force. Good, now we have a continuous but very slow movement.
Let's try a higher velocity value out of curiosity. Yes, the door closes much faster now. Ok, that was it already for this Unity Quickie, which ended up not so short as expected. If you like my tutorials and want to support me, check out my Patreon page. The link is in the description. Bye for now and thanks for watching.